This video is going to cover between subjects MANOVA. So looking at when you have multiple independent variables that are categorical and um, multiple dependent variables. So ANOVA squared, basically. Um, and in this particular video, we're only going to do between subjects. If you're going to do repeated, uh, repeated measures, often those are treated as each of the DVs. Or you can do a profile analysis when you have multiple repeated measures that you want to measure as your dependent variable, um, <clears throat> and that's a different video. So doing uh, just between subjects, MANOVA, we're going to do a 2 by 2. So I have a femininity variable that is measured as either low femininity or high. And this is a mix of different subjects. So this is male and female uh, measured on this characteristic. And then masculinity, low and high. So I've got a two by two between subjects MANOVA. Um, and then just some a quick warning. Uh, we're going to see a bunch of new things in this video where we get to use multiple DVs, which means I have to do something with them. And so what happens in MANOVA is you have three or four different ways to combine the DVs into sort of the super DV. Uh, and that's Wilkes Lambda, Roy's Argus Root, Hotelling's Trace, and Polis. And so those are all different ways to take your multiple DVs and put them together into one gigantic variable to see if there are group differences across all of your dependent variables before you go into, well, which dependent variables? So ANOVA tends to be run as, are there differences in my means? And then for your post hoc, you do, well, where are the differences? MANOVA is like an extra layer on that cake where you say, are there differences in the DV combined? Okay, there are, so where, uh, which DV, and then if that's significant, you move on to, well, how so for groups. So working from largest variables down to the smallest components. Um, <clears throat> and so when you see these on the output, they're not anything magic, it's just different ways to combine the DV to create the largest difference. So they work in your favor, um, as, and usually that works best when your DVs are correlated. Um, because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to combine variables into one giant DV if they aren't actually related to each other. So you actually do want them to be correlated, but not too correlated or it won't run. Um, so when you see those on the output, we'll come back to them. But basically, there are ways to combine different the dependent variables such that you get large group differences. <clears throat> but first, let's start with power. So here's G power. <laughs> Okay, it's still an F test, so we're still working on F here. Pretty much everything we'll, we do is in the F family, ANOVA and regression. Um, the T family is dependent, independent T, that sort of thing. Okay, so let's go down here. And there's several different MANOVA options. We're going to pick special effects and interactions um, because the other ones are more for profile analysis. So this is uh, for um, main effects and interactions in between subjects. Uh, the effect size is F squared here, but it's listed as uh, V. So if you hit determine, you can pull polarized V from the output, if you know it, and estimate your F squared. I am going to, in my notes I put it as 0.25, so let's do that. Alpha is 0.05, power is 0.80. Uh, and then the number of groups is going to be the number of conditions. So I have a 2 by 2, which means I have four conditions. Um, and then the number of predictors is the number of IVs, so I have two. And then the number of response variables is the number of DVs. And in this example, we're going to do three, I believe. Yes, yeah, self-esteem, attitudes towards the roles of women, and neuroticism. and then hit calculate and so it says I need 31 people uh, and that's because this number of response variables here is they have to take all three to be able to be included in this analysis um, and so it's 31 people basically for the two by two part right? <clears throat> and that's why the degrees of freedom don't match um, normally when we do between subjects the denominator DF and the total sample size are very close um, because of the way they're calculated well in this case they're not because we're talking about people are measured three times uh, and so I'll show you when we get to um, the output where you can find this number to be able to estimate F squared appropriately. Okay, so it's 
part of the MANOVA output. Um, if you aren't sure, um, I would tell you to just hover over this box. It doesn't always work for me in my Mac version, but it will tell you what a small, medium, and large are for F squared. <clears throat> All right, so that's power. So I need 31 people. I have way, way, way more than that, so I should be good. If there's an effect, I should be able to find it. All right, so our assumptions are going to stay mostly the same that we've been doing. Uh, I really probably won't check univariate outliers this time because I'm working on a multivariate design. So I want to know if across all the DVs I have a problem. Um, Multicollinearity, you want to make sure your DVs aren't too correlated. Um, because if they're perfectly correlated, it will freak out when it tries to combine them because they are the same variable. So it's still R, it's uh, 0.9. It really needs to be linear because they're combining the DV in a linear way. So we're going to check for linearity. And then you do want univariate and multivariate normality. Um, but if you have at least 30 people, it tends to not be too big of a deal, but we'll look at that. Uh, and then homogeneity. So we're going to get a new homogeneity test called boxes. We'll also look at Levine's and the residual outputs. So let's jump into this example. We've measured people on their femininity and masculinity, and we want to know how these independent variables affect several different dependent variables. So of the data that I have, I have self-esteem, locus of control, attitudes towards the role of women, uh, socioeconomic status, introversion, extroversion, and neuroticism. I picked three that seemed kind of interesting. I believe this book, example is from Tabachnik and Fidel. Um, and so I picked self-esteem, attitudes, let's move it over here, and neuroticism. <clears throat> so we'll work with these three for this example. So we would want to start by checking for accuracy and missing data. So I'm going to go analyze, descriptives, and then frequencies. And for that, I'm going to use all five variables because, don't forget, you want to make sure you don't have any weird codes or anything going on in your categorical variables. Move those over. Then you can click statistics if you want to look at the mean, definitely the min and the max. Um, <clears throat> but you can also look and see if there's anything crazy going on, like if your mean is too high. So continue. And, okay. There we go. <clears throat> so, we'll look at this statistics box to make sure our numbers don't go outside of the range. That's one of the most important things. And I don't really remember the ranges for these data, so I'm going to assume they're pretty, pretty accurate. But another issue you want to make sure um, with MANOVA, if the scales are wildly different, it tends to have trouble combining them, like you'll lose power. And so if you have a 1 to 5 scale and a um, like a 0 to 1,000 scale, you'll have trouble with MANOVA. And it might be better to run it as two separate ANOVAs and control with like a Bonferroni or a type 1 error correction. Uh, but ours seem to be roughly the same scale. This attitudes one is larger, but it's not a huge difference. Um, <clears throat> but the good thing about the output you're going to get is that you can see the univariate ANOVAs as well as the MANOVA, so you can kind of make that decision looking at, well, did it hurt me? Did I lose power by combining variables with very different scales? Usually you will. Uh, and then I can make sure that there aren't any weird codes. So everybody's coded as low or high, and I'm doing pretty good. Another thing we haven't talked about too much is the, uh, the ratio of cases. So you want to make sure that's not too crazy. We're working actually 70 to 30 and 66 to 34, which isn't the best. 50-50 would be your best ratio. Um, and when you start to get to about 8 to 1, you're really going to have problems, um, or 5 to 1 for both ratios. So you want to make sure you have at least enough people in the smaller group. Okay, and then remember, enough people is usually about 30. We're working with 100, so we'll be okay. But a huge difference in the, the sample, the ratio of cases can be very problematic. All right. So I seem to be okay. Now on here I've checked in the notes, I've checked for univariate outliers. Um, and so you can walk through and do that. I've done that in nearly every video we've gone over. But the deal is we're working on MANOVA here. So it's a multivariate design. So I'm really probably going to check for multivariate outliers first. And then I might look at univariate outliers to determine who's, like which, maybe it's one of the variables that's the problem. But I'm actually just going to kind of skip that right now. 
and go on straight into Mahalanobis distance. So to do that, I'm going to transform compute. Remember, you got to call it something useful for yourself, so random is always a good thing. Um, if you click over here in function group, hit R to go down to random numbers. We're going to use RB chi square. And I always like 7 as my degrees of freedom because it seems to work well. So hit OK. So we've created this random variable. And now we're going to compare our data against that random variable to make sure it meets uh, the assumptions. So analyze, regression, and linear. Your random variable goes in the dependent box. And then all three DVs that we're using right now go in the independent box. So self-esteem, attitudes, and eroticism. Under plots, Z pred and Y, Z residual and X, histogram and normal probability plots, continue. And then under save, Mahalanobis, continue. And then hit OK. All right, so I'm going to go back to the data. Don't forget the star button takes you back to the data. And we're going to sort um, a Holonovus column descending. So data sort cases, Mahalanobis descending. Or you can right click on the column. Um, it doesn't always love my uh, MacBook's right click option. So, what do these numbers mean to me? Well, this is how far the way a person is from the mean of means. So I need a chi-square table to be able to compare my Mahalanobis scores to what the cutoff should be. So what's the cutoff score? Well, cutoff scores are based on the number of d uh, variables you stuck into the independence box, or your number of DVs in this case. So we have three. And we're going to use 0 .001. So you want it to be really nutty before you delete anybody. So that's going to be 1627. So cutoff score for three variables at 0.01 is 1627. And I don't have anybody outside that range. So I don't have any multivariate outliers in this data set. Um, and I think if you were looking at the notes, you could see I had a couple of univariate outliers. But since they aren't multivariate outliers, I'm going to leave it alone. <clears throat> Because I don't want to have to delete people for the later analyses when their scores across all the variables are okay. All right. That being said, you do have to check for multicollinearity. So we've done uh, accuracy missing data and outliers. Now on the multicollinearity. Analyze. Correlate. Bivariate. All three of your DVs. And then hit OK. Right, there we go. So in looking at this correlation table, I want to make sure that none of them are over 0.9 that, because that's when it's problematic. But here's another issue. I want to make sure they're actually correlated because the point of a MANOVA of creating these giant DVs, other than type 1 error correction, is that you want to make sure, you want to see if people differ in this super DV. I mean, that's just a silly term for it, but it's that idea of like people differ across whatever this combined variable is. So we could call this personality factors. Um, and so if they aren't correlated with each other, you're saying that these things should go together, but they don't. Um, so you do want them to be correlated. So we might have some problems with these attitudes, this attitude variable because it's not correlated with neuroticism. But um, you'll just lose power when you have that problem. So it's not like you're going to really break any of the rules. You just won't find things as easily. Okay. <clears throat> All right. None of them are greater than 0.9, so we don't have any problems with that. But we might have some problems with too low. If I scroll up here... We should be able to look at my linearity chart because I didn't delete anybody. Well, that looks pretty good. It's pretty close to the line. So I bet we have um, multivariate linearity. Now, uh, let's do univariate normality here. So analyze, descriptives, frequencies. I still have it all set up. I'm going to take out my two IVs because I don't want to um, analyze them for skew because they are categorical. I'm going to turn off frequency tables so I don't get a bunch of output. Under statistics, make sure you got skew and kurtosis checked so you can see the values. And then if you like the charts like I do, hit charts and histogram and show normal curve. Continue. 
and OK. Now, generally, I'm going to check this second. So I would actually look at my um, multivariate normality chart here. And it actually looks pretty good. Most of the data is stacked under 2 to 2. You know, the largest bars are over 0. But I do have this little tail here. Now, this is generally not a problem for you if you have a large number of participants. I've got 369. Um, and so what I really probably would like look at this graph and go, okay, great, move on. But in case it's problematic, how can I check what's happening? Well, then you would want to look at the individual DVs one at a time. And so I've got my skew values. They look okay. My kurtosis, kurtosis values, and they look okay. Um, and so I don't tend to have problems because they're not over three. And then I can look at each variable individually. And they're actually pretty normal. So that's how you would check if you had problems with your multivariate chart, which one was it? Right here. And the last thing I want to look at is homogeneity. So that's going to be this chart. So I want to look at both across here. So is everything centered over zero? And I'd say eh, it's close. Um, because it runs up to two here, but runs down to four here, but that's mainly this dude. And then over here, zero, it goes to two, and then to four, that's just a couple little people. So the general gist of the data is this giant square right here. And then we've got a couple of people out here. Um, so I'd say it's probably okay. The good news is, though, I have two tests that I can run to check it. With the reminder that boxes and Levines are heavily biased by sample size, so sometimes they turn out significant if you have really large samples. I don't think that's the case here. But um, if you aren't sure, you can use those as a screener. So it looks okay. Eh, it's iffy. <clears throat> so let's run the actual analysis now. So let's go analyze general linear model and multivariate this time. Uh, word of warning, if you have anything that's repeated and you want to treat it as actually repeated, you still have to do repeated measures. So if you're going to do a profile analysis, it's going to be under repeated measures, even though it's technically a multivariate design. So a multivariate. This is the exact same window that you get for uh, univariate ANOVA. You just have more room to put in DVs now. Other than that, it all is the same. So I'm going to pick femininity and masculinity, put those in my fixed factor box. Self-esteem, attitudes, and neuroticism in my DV box. And I just picked those three because they seemed interesting to me. Um, I could have picked any of the six or all six at once. Okay, but I screened these three and let's keep going with them. All right. Under post hoc, um, I could move both variables over and give me post hoc tests and then click Tukey. It's not going to give me anything um, because there are only two levels here. But... Uh, if there were more than two, I would want to uh, be sure to click these buttons. Uh, so it's just going to give me a little warning, uh, but it's habit. So hit continue. Under say, no, sorry, options. We're going to move over all three. Display means four. Remember, this is the other place you can get post hocs. Descriptives, effect size, homogeneity. Okay, so I can get the marginal means, uh, eta squared, and boxes and Levines, and this says give me all three. So marginal for femme, marginal for masculinity, and interaction. And then hit continue. Then if you want, you can do plots. <clears throat> give me femininity here, masculinity in separate lines. Hit add, and then I'm gonna do the reverse. Hit add. Now that's going to give me six plots, so it's going to be a little crazy, but um, what it'll do is it'll give you both directions. So if you're trying to decide how to analyze the interaction, you can see uh, both charts, so like it flipped back and forth. Uh, sometimes it helps me see which, which one makes more sense to analyze. And this will give it to you uh, one for each DV. So hit continue. And then let's hit OK. <clears throat> So first thing it did is it told me, I'm not doing two keys. Come on now. It's like, okay, fine. Um, you get this crazy um, conditional means box. I'm mostly going to ignore it, but it does give you N. So when you get to analyzing post hocs and doing effect sizes, this is one of the only places you can find N. So don't delete it. Just kind of skip over it at first. 
first thing I'm going to do is check homogeneity. So when you run your data screening, you're often not quite done until you get to the analysis. And so here is boxes. Boxes is a test of homogeneity um, for your combined dependent variable. And so you don't want this to be significant, right? So we don't want 0, 0, 0. And it's actually OK. If it was not OK, um, <clears throat> I would go down here to Levine's and check and see which variable it is. So if it's 0, 0, 0, um, I would check Levine's, and that will give me each one separated out. <clears throat> and so um, we don't get boxes like every time. Like it would be nice if I could get boxes for every single analysis we've done. But generally, we've done this like sort of fake regression style analyses to look at homogeneity because there are times when you don't have categorical IVs. So repeated measures or double repeated measures. Technically, none of that is categorical in a sense. Um, you're screening all of the DVs. So boxes only really works for when you have groups, like actual defined groups. Um, but if you do this as a double repeated measures in uh, using the multivariate test, although that won't work. Just kidding. If you do as double repeated measures in SPSS, it will um, it'll give you sporicity and you won't get boxes. Uh, so it would be nice to get this every single time, but it only technically works for um, between subjects kind of designs in SPSS. <clears throat> Alright, so we're going to take this multivariate test box and create ourselves a table. Because I love tables. It's a vice of mine. What I'm going to do is talk about how do I analyze MANOVA in a way that is different than ANOVA. Let's see. I'm really grumpy about copying, so let's see if we can get it to copy. Maybe not today. One more time. Okay, we're going to take a screenshot because SPSS is being SPSS, right? That should work. Okay. So what I'm going to do is create myself a table, and this is going to be a combination of like several of the tables that I've kind of done for you guys before. Let me landscape here. Um, and create a table that's got, uh, what am I analyzing? The MANOVA results, the ANOVA results, um, <clears throat> and then uh, post hocs, and let's actually can include Cohen's D as well. So I'm kind of combining a bunch of our tables into one, and we're going to add to it as we go. Uh, so this is going to be the test. No, not the test. Let's say the IV slash interaction. These are the MANOVA results, ANOVA results. This is going to be any type of post hoc we're going to run, and effect size. This is, <clears throat> the data we have is not necessarily the best example for this because the um, effect sizes for a for a two level design are eta squared, so eta and d are the same. Um, they're not in the same scale, but they're the same idea. But we'll kind of get an idea going of what's happening. Okay. So the first thing we're going to analyze is femininity and then masculinity. Uh, I can't spell either of those, so I'm going to leave them short. And then we're going to do the interaction. I didn't need these last two rows. Go away. Go away. All right. So for the MANOVA here, you're going to ignore this intercept section. So all this intercept stuff is still something you ignore. And I really love the way this box is set out. Um, if F could just move over two spots, it would actually be in APA order, which would be great. But uh, it's SPSS, so it's not. Um, but it gives you, instead of going... Um, IV, lost my mouse, uh, and then um, b between subjects degrees of freedom and then within subjects degrees of freedom, like up and then down, it gives them to you going across, which is kind of nice. So it's going to be 3 and 363 is uh, 8.47 here. Okay, so for femininity, at 3, 363 is 8.47. My p value is less than 0 0.001. And partial eta squared is 0.07. Okay, so it's close to medium effect size. Um, and so that's significant. 
for my masculinity here. Oh, sorry, I didn't talk about uh, what all these numbers are. So let me back up two seconds. So we've got Plies, Wilkes, Hotelings, and Roy's Largest Root. Uh, and when I talked about at the beginning of the video uh, how these are um, the combinations of the DV, which one do I use? Well, right now they're all the same, so which one do I use? It's kind of a silly question, but generally people use Wilkes Lambda. Uh, it's one of the most popular ones um, because it's got a lot of mathematical support. And so what what they are is just different ways to calculate sum of squares when you combine those DVs, and often they end up being the same, not totally, that's not 100% the rule, but generally they're kind of the same. Um, and so sometimes it doesn't matter, like in this case all the F values are exactly the same, but I would usually recommend doing Wilkes Lambda. And the other ones aren't really wrong, uh, it's just popular. And then what are these numbers here, this value column that's labeled so helpfully as value and not anything else? Um, uh, well, Pelize is actually uh, partial a to squared. So when you're working in g power and ask you for Pelize v, it's this thing right here under value. Or you can enter a to squared. Bum, bum, bum. They're the same. Uh, Wilkes lambda is 1 minus a to squared. And then I forget exactly how these two are calculated, but it's clearly very close to eta. It's like a slightly different calculation. Um, and you'll see down here for the interaction, they're the same, but for this masculinity one, they're a little bigger. Um, but generally, these are estimates of effect size, whereas Wilkes is 1 minus effect size, so it's error variance. <clears throat> okay, so I'm using Wilkes Lambda, and usually you just tell people which one you picked. So using Pelias Trace, using Wilkes Lambda, that sort of thing. Uh, the second um, Main effect is also significant, so I've got Wilkes Lambda here. So I got three, 363 is 3180 p is less than 0 0.001. Partial a to squared is 0 0.21. Okay, so that's almost a big effect size. And last but not least, our interaction is not significant. <clears throat> so 0.71. P equals 0.54, partial a to squared. You can say is 0.01 or is less than 0.01. And so anytime this is getting into what do I do next? So we've discovered that there's a main effect for femininity across my combined DV and a main effect for masculinity across my DV. There's not a main effect or an interaction. Anytime you write not significant, you stop. So the cool thing about MANOVA is that it tells you where to stop. So even if suddenly, magically, somehow, my ANOVA was significant for this interaction for one of the variables, I still would not analyze it. And so it's it's uh, considered sort of like a, a, tr a tree, this way one of my students was describing it. So if one of the branches is broken, you can't keep going on it. Um, and so you're starting with the biggest components first and working your way out to the leaves and so if a branch is broken stop. And so essentially um, if it's not significant don't keep going. <clears throat> so now what I'd want to do is look at my individual ANOVAs and see what was significant for each DV. So we're going to break this down into self-esteem, attitudes, and neuroticism for each um, effect that was significant. Now I'm not going to do interactions because it wasn't significant. So let's go back to our output. And then our between subjects box is the same between subjects box we normally get. Um, I'm going to cut off the top here because it's so huge. So I'm going to cut out the part you need. Okay, so you need femininity through error. Um, you do not need any of this other corrective model intercept corrected total stuff. Now these are the same um, ANOVA boxes that we've analyzed in the Between Subjects one-way video and the Between Subjects two-way video, uh, and then there's one for mixed designs as well, but what the trick is here is that I've now got all three variables at once. So it's going to give me self-esteem, attitudes, and racism, and so it's just confusing because instead of here's the self-esteem ANOVA, here's the attitudes ANOVA, it crams them all into one. So. <clears throat> Um, it's kind of nice because it's all in one place, but it can be a little confusing the first time you see them. Uh, the other thing is it goes back to having between subjects up here and then uh, within subjects degrees of freedom down here. So uh, top and bottom. 
as opposed to the more cleaner format, which is when they're right next to each other. Hypothesis DF, error DF. This is much more, um, it matches the statistical theory. Uh, and then, like I said, if F could just move over, it would be in the right order for APA, but alas, all the windows need to be different because that is how SPSS is set up. Um, so what we're going to do is write down each um, ANOVA here and see if they're significant. So for self-esteem, I've got, let's make this bigger, for math, femininity, 1 and 365 equals, okay, and the F is this one. I know I cut off the top, but it's mean square, a sum of squares, degrees of freedom, mean square, here's F, so 5.18. P is 0 0.02, partial A to squared is 0.01. <clears throat> oh, no, not quite big enough. Because otherwise it's going to get really hairy. There we go. Okay. So this first one is significant. So I would keep analyzing self-esteem over here in my post talk. Okay. For attitudes, I got 1 and 365. <laughs> Equal 16.91, p is less than 0.01, partial a to squared is 0.04, so that's also significant. So I would analyze attitudes for my post talk. And then neuroticism here is not significant. So I'm going to do f1, 365, so 1, 365 here is 1.54. P is 0.22, partial A squared is less than a 01. So this one's not. So I would not analyze it in my post talk. Those two are not significantly different. So I would stop. Essentially, I have this. <clears throat> all right, we're going to do the exact same thing for masculinity here. I think they're all significant, yeah. 1365 is 7310. Gracious. P is less than 0.01. Partial A to squared is 0.17. So that one is sig. So I would analyze it for a post talk. Attitudes is 1365. Okay. They're all the same in this example because it's a square design, so it's two by two. So just remember, square designs have. Um, all the same degrees of freedom. So P is less than 0 0.01. Partial A to squared is 0 0.09, and that's significant. So I would analyze attitudes over here. And then last but not least for neuroticism, equals 6.12, P is 0 0.01, partial A to squared is 0 0.02. <clears throat> So our masculinity MONOVA was significant, right? And it's 21% um, of the unique variance. And then what we're doing now is breaking that down. Now these are partial ADAs, so they will not add up. Okay, so don't expect these partial ADAs to add up because that's not quite the way they're calculated. Um, but I can tell of this sort of close to large effect, the biggest one, the one that's driving that effect, is going to be self-esteem because it's got the largest effect size. If I'm looking at <clears throat> femininity, uh, what was probably driving that effect was the fact that attitudes had a larger effect size because okay? neuroticism was not significant. Oops, I need neuro here too. You'll notice that I'm totally ignoring this uh, set of ANOVAs here for the interaction because they were not significant. Now, in the video, I'm going to show you how to analyze interactions just sort of briefly because that's important. It doesn't matter on this data set. So this is true for, like, if I was to write this up, I would not analyze those because they weren't significant. But if uh, I'm going to just show you how to do that, just in case. Um, but sometimes what may happen is that it might be significant down here in the ANOVA, but not in the MANOVA. Don't be tempted. You're not supposed to analyze them. So that's why I made my little chart and I told myself, stop. Okay, let's see where we're at. So we've gotten through the ANOVA box. 
And now we're looking at marginal means. <clears throat> and so I want to look here at femininity and talk about the differences. Uh, let me go back over here. Gotta keep adding here. Right. So I've got self-esteem first. So for women, or not women, this is people, people with low femininity, they have a higher self-esteem than um, high femininity. So low has a higher self-esteem than high. So that would be my uh, post hoc test because um, <clears throat> there's only two levels, so I don't have to run anything. If I wanted to run something here, it could be a two key, which is remember an independent T with a correction for main effects. Or for our interaction, it would be an independent T, and you could correct with um, Tuki Bonferroni, a bunch of different ones. Um, <clears throat> but since I don't have um, more than two levels, I'm just going to kind of look at them. So for my attitudes, uh, for low femininity, I have less atti lower attitudes than high femininity. So the attitudes variable. Um, I don't really actually remember what it's supposed to be from the Tabachnik and Fidel, but my, in my head it's that higher scores or higher attitudes towards the role of women, so more equality attitudes, where um, more positive attitudes, where lower scores or lower attitudes, more of your traditional like barefoot in the kitchen kind of attitudes. I'm also a woman, so I'm partial. Um, so People with low femininity have lower attitudes. People with high femininity have higher attitudes, which just sort of makes sense. In our neuroticism one, basically there's no difference in neuroticism between low and high femininity. So we can't claim that the more feminine we are, the crazier we are, is the idea. Um, I shouldn't use the word crazy because I'm a psychologist, but um, we certainly don't have differences in neuroticism. <clears throat> now, let's try masculinity. So all three of these were significant. <clears throat> all right, let me get this on the next page here. So it's easier to read. There we go. <clears throat> so for self-esteem, people with low masculinity had higher self-esteems than high masculinity. So we're looking at people who don't ex dis exhibit... Um, either high traits in either one. So sort of the polar ends of masculinity and femi femininity show higher self-esteem. So that is also true for the femininity variable. Attitudes towards the role of women though is backwards. So low masculinity has higher attitudes than high masculinity. And that makes sense because if you're high in masculinity you might think that women have a lesser role um, and so they have, you have lower attitudes. So these are kind of making sense that they're backwards because we're talking about femininity and masculinity. We're not talking about the gender of the participant, but um, how people respond to those, um, those traits. And then for neuroticism, low masculinity actually has higher neuroticism than high masculinity. <clears throat> okay, so that, if I was to analyze this, um, I would basically be done because of actions. Now my effect size out here is covered by the ANOVA, but if I were to do a two key or an independent T, I would pick up Cohen's D. Right? So if I had um, to run pairwise tests, I would put plug that into uh, Moat, which I'll show you in a second, and then use Cohen's D for those because they're independent T's in the background. Okay, so we've run all the way through this particular example, but let me show you how you would analyze an interaction just in case. So let's say that interaction was significant, and I wanted to analyze the differences. So let me get this. There we go. <clears throat> so let's say this interaction happened to be significant. What would I do? In my post hoc column, what I'd need to do is that table that we've been doing um, across all of these videos now. So I'm going to copy this and sort of work with our fake analysis here since we, uh, what do we call this? Effect. Okay, so this was the MANOVA. 
it would be an over here and post hoc and then effect size. So let's say this actually was significant. We would have analyzed the ANOVA, so we might, let's just do um, attitudes because those are interesting. Because that's probably the one that has the closest um, effect. And so we would have said it was one and 365 is um, 0.93. This is not significant, but remember this is how you dried it up. Um, p value is something terrible, 3, 4, eta squared is 0.03. Less than 01. <laughs> All right. Again, we're pretending it's significant right now. So at this point, to do the post hoc, it would need to be an independent t, because this is between subjects. And what I would do is split file, because everybody loves split file, um, because it makes your life easier. And so I could go and look at my output. <clears throat> Let's scroll down on the bottom here. And remember I said it's going to give you plots for each combination by each DV. So I've got self-esteem, but we decided to do attitudes. So I could split on masculinity and compare low and high femininity. So I would compare here to here. Or I could split on femininity and compare low to high masculinity. So there's like a slight difference, they're pretty parallel, that's why I didn't get the interaction. Um, or I could compare them like across here, so how are they different? <clears throat> uh, and then I also got the graphs for neuroticism. So you can see why we didn't get the interaction, because they're all pretty parallel. This is probably the, the one with the biggest effect, although it's still pretty small. Uh, let's see, I want to compare within their own combos. So let's do um, for femininity, let's do low versus high. And then for masculinity, let's do low versus high. Okay. So remember with interactions, you have to hold one thing constant and then analyze the other pair. And that's very similar to what the data is going to be up here, right? Because that's essentially what it's doing uh, here. Um, but I could, the other alternative is that I could do for low whatever, I could do femininity versus masculinity, and then for high, I could do fem versus mask. <clears throat> um, instead, I think this one makes more sense just with the way the data um, is set up. So let's analyze those. Because I'm splitting on uh, femininity and masculinity, <clears throat> What I want to do is go over here, right? <clears throat> and am I doing that right? Hold on. So I've got a two by two. Something seems amiss. Let's write this out. So I've got my two by two, right? So I've got, oops, I should have done that as a three by three. There we go. Oh, gracious word. Try again. All right, so I've got low femininity, high femininity. Yeah, I totally did this wrong. Screech. Let's try again. Um, and then I've got low masculinity and high masculinity. I was doing the main effects. Um, <clears throat> so here we've got low, low. And then here we've got low, oops, low mask. Hi, Fem. And we'll just mix our cases for fun. So we've got high mask, low Fem, and high mask, high Fem. <clears throat> All right. And this is why I like, tell people always make these charts. All right. So I could, for low femininity, there we go, compare. Um, low and high masculinity. I was missing a variable on mine. And then for high femininity, compare low and high masculinity. So what we're doing basically is for low fem, we're going to compare low versus high mask. Or for high fem, compare low versus high mask. <clears throat> or I could go the other way. For low masculinity, 
compare low whew, spelling versus high femininity. And then for high masculinity, low versus high femininity. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So that is a good example of when you're like, wait, I've done something wrong. Um, <clears throat> so you want to make sure what I was saying was that you have one variable that you're holding constant and you're analyzing the other two. And so sometimes it's easy to go back and think about them as main effects, which is what I was just doing. And then when I went to analyze it, I'm like, wait, why am I splitting file? That's where I got realized I had done something wrong. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, because I'm, I'm analyzing low and high femininity, I want to split on that variable. So now I should be able to make this happen in SPSS. So let's go data, split file, right? organize output by groups, and I'm going to split on femininity, and then hit OK. Uh, just don't do both. You're only picking one variable. So I'm going to do analyze, general linear model, univariate. Why univariate? Well, because I've split file. I'm not doing um, multivariate anymore. I'm down to the individual ANOVA level. Um, oops. Oh, I could do independent T. That would be easier. So let's go analyze. <clears throat> Compare means an independent T. Sorry, I got excited about ANOVA <clears throat> and did the wrong one. So I'm going to now take masculinity, put it in a grouping variable, hit define groups, do one and two, continue, and then now I want to do just attitudes because that's the one we're pretending was significant. And I hit OK. <clears throat> All right. Sorry, I was trying to do ANCOVA again. Everybody knows how excited I was about ANCOVA, so um, <clears throat> we're going to just use independent T. That's much easier. All right. So these would be the means that I could use to plug into Moat and the ones I would have normally written out. I'm trying to save a little space in this video. And then here's my t-test for those attitudes. Okay, so for the first one, do this. so this is for low femininity. <clears throat> We've got t of, well that wasn't very useful, now was it? Let's go down here and look at it again. So t of 105 for my degrees of freedom is 4.36. P value is less than 0.01, and we're going to have to come up with the effect size over here. <clears throat> so we'll use these um, mean values, and then here's N, yay! <clears throat> so the other place that N appears, I'm going to go over to Moat and plug in the numbers I've got. So measures, independent T. So my first group mean is 34. 68 and then 2947. My standard deviation is 5.97, 5.557, 5.5, 5 5 and then I've got 71 and 36. So there's my T number, it matches. Yay! And my Cohen's D is 0 0.89. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's a large effect. And then if I look at the means for low femininity, low masculinity has a higher attitudes. So when femininity is low and masculinity is low, attitudes are high. When femininity is low and that masculinity is high, attitudes are lower. So really, I could do that. Lower masculinity has a, a better perception than higher masculinity. Let's look at the other one now. So when femininity is high, what happens? <clears throat> Come on, word. <clears throat> so here are my means. It looks like they're not going to be different, or they're less different, I guess. Um, uh, I have a large N, so it's going to be significant. So T260 is 4.51. Right? P value is less than 0.01. And we'll get D here in a second. So let's look at those means. 
So for high femininity, low masculinity still has better perceptions. So they're in the same direction, which is why we didn't get the interaction. But let's look at the effect size for this one. So I've got 37.05, 33, 30, and then 6.28. 6.54, now let's enter, re enter my ends here, 173 and 89. There's my T, it matches, and I got 0.59 as my Cohen's D. <clears throat> so we didn't get this interaction because they're in the same direction and they're pretty close to the same size. There's not enough difference here to say that that's an interaction. Because if you look at the means, these are clearly further apart than these, but we're not getting enough of that fan effect to see the interaction at the MANOVA level. Right? So that's how you'd analyze it, complete with me messing it up so you can see what not to do. Um, not on purpose, but a good uh, lesson to look at and think about, okay, I have to have two variables involved here. I can't just have for low femininity, high and um, what, or sorry, for femininity, high and low. That's the main effect. So I have to have both variables involved where one of them is being held constant and I'm using the other one. Um, <clears throat> so that's why I always tell people to make these little charts. And when I do research, I normally make them too to make sure I'm not um, missing something, which is what I just did uh, a minute ago. <laughs> okay. All right. So what else do we have to do to make this a complete uh, write-up? The only other thing left is charts, really. Now for the charts... These are um, essentially the same graphs as a double between subjects. So let me go over them real quick. So let's do analyze. <clears throat> uh, oh, no, just kidding. Graphs, chart builder. Oh, first thing you want to do, since I do this all the time, is turn off split file. So go data, split file, all cases. Okay. I think that's like three videos now. I haven't done that in. So now let's go to graphs, chart builder. <clears throat> I'm going to do a double bar graph here. I'm going to stick one IV into set color and one IV into X axis. <clears throat> and then pick one of the DVs and stick that into Y. You do have to do this three times because uh, you have to do one for each DV. You can't cluster all three of them together. <clears throat> because that creates you a mixed graph. And while that would be especially lovely, um, you still have, you have three variables and it will only handle up to two. And so if you wanna do that sort of clustered mixed graph, uh, go find yourself some Excel awesomeness. Okay, so ex uh, I got self-esteem. I'm gonna click display error bars and apply. And then I could go through and clean all this up. That says masculinity, I'm okay with that. Uh, this says mean self-esteem really hate that it says mean, average, self-esteem, all capitalized. If I knew what the range was, I'd make sure to change it. I'm sure zero is the bottom. Hit apply. Uh, let's see. Femininity is spelled over here. So I'm going to hit OK. <clears throat> I think you would just want to check everything. So is everything capitalized appropriately? Do you have error bars? Does the white axis run from the bottom to the top of the data or the scale anyway? Um, are my X and Y axis labels appropriate? I think you would do that for every DV, so each DV separately. Uh, because that's the ultimate goal, is to split them on their DVs. And so uh, there's no real way to create the MANOVA overall box because you don't really get the numbers that it's using for the um, <clears throat> for the combined DV, but I can show you each DV separately. All right, so that is a complete example of MANOVA. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to explain in this video is a Roy Bargeman analysis. <clears throat> and so uh, Roy Bargeman is a different type of post hoc test. And so it's the same MANOVA when you start. And so here, <clears throat> this MANOVA section would be the same. So I'm going to include it in this video and keep going with the data I have. Um, so I don't have to re-show you data screening. And so everything up to this point is the same at the MANOVA level. 
<clears throat> so I would screen it in the same way, and then I would um, <clears throat> walk through the MANOVA in exactly the same way. <clears throat> After that point, though, <clears throat> it now becomes what's called a step-down analysis. To do a Roy Barshman, you really need a theoretical order of events. And so you need to have a reason why you would think that the DVs um, came in a certain order. So this one comes first in life, this one comes second. This is often, I feel like, used in developmental research. That's the place it makes the most sense to me. Um, so, or you're, you're theorizing an order. So I expected these to be the, to be the most variants, and then maybe after controlling for that, this should come second. Um, so I do research with people who study, uh, lo uh, they're in the logotherapy, so how meaning in life affects all these different things. And so often we'll do designs where we control for depressive symptoms or post-traumatic stress, and then what happens if we include meaning in life, so the extra addition. That's really a hierarchical regression, but if we were using this in a MANOVA, from a MANOVA point of view, I could use those variables as a step down. So I would control for depression first and then do these other variables. So you really need to have like one outcome that is like the end goal, and then um, the other variables come in an order. <clears throat> so for this analysis, we've got self-esteem, attitudes, and neuroticism. So I'm going to argue that neuroticism probably comes first, or for fun. <clears throat> and so let's add, actually, to make this make even more sense, this is going to be an ANOVA. Our DV is going to be neuroticism. Okay. <clears throat> uh, at the MANOVA level, we're still using femininity, masculinity, and we'll get their interaction. <clears throat> And our DVs all together are neuroticism, attitudes, and self-esteem. But I've decided that neuroticism needs to come first, and then attitudes, and I'm sorry, and then self-esteem, and then attitudes. So I'm going to do it in this order. I'm going to say that neuroticism comes first. It's one of those pre-built-in personality characteristics. Okay, I don't know if I really believe that, but that's the idea. And then self-esteem comes second, so that's partially pre-built in, partially interactions with your peers, something you learn as you're growing up. And then attitudes are definitely learned, um, especially about women's roles. And so I'm going to make that one last. So the point of this analysis is to say this comes first, then this, then this. Okay, so this is half ANOVA, half ANCOPA. So I would then run a... Um, <clears throat> single between subjects ANOVA, so a two-way between subjects ANOVA on neuroticism. And you actually already have the output for that in the MANOVA output, but I'm going to tell you not to use it. Because then it's very tempting to use just all three ANOVAs. So there's a method to my madness here. Let's run it as an ANOVA first. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here, close all this stuff. <clears throat> Let's go analyze. Uh general linear model, and then univariate, for real this time. I'm going to use just neuroticism in my DV, <clears throat> femininity and masculinity in my fixed factor. That's not going to change. That always stays the same in this analysis. You can use your post hoc window. Remember, it's not going to do anything for us. I'm going to pick two key. Um, but if you have um, three or four levels, and then... <clears throat> Options, let's move over all three, display means. We've actually checked Levine's already, but um, <clears throat> just in case. Continue and okay. <clears throat> so this is going to give me the two-way ANOVA for just neuroticism. Oops. So let's see if I can get that up here. There we go. So I would see if that, um, now IV stay the same across all of this. I'm going to see if that is significant. Okay. So this is still true here that I am not going to do anything with that interaction because it wasn't significant, but for femininity it was. So I've got 1, 365 is 1.54, P is 0.22. You'll notice this is very familiar. 
because it's the same thing as above. So that's not significant. So I would stop. For masculinity, it is though. So 1, 365 uh, is, let's see, 6.12. P is equal to 0.01. <coughs> Partial eta squared is 102. So as I'm stepping down through this, so step one was neuroticism, female uh, femininity is not significant. So I'm going to stop because this is still the tree example. What is the next step? It's actually ANCOVA. Okay. So I'm going to take that DV, this thing, and turn it into a CV. And then I'm going to stick in the second DV we selected down here, which is self-esteem. My IVs stay the same. So now I'm going to run an ANCOVA for masculinity. Now I'm leaving in the IVs, even though they've stopped being significant, to control for them. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to control for neuroticism. So really to me, Roy Barshman is like, okay, this thing happened. So... Now, if I control for that, what happens with this variable? If I control for that, what happens with this variable? So you're just sort of like, it's very similar to hierarchical regression with lots of steps. So when you get to uh, the regression video, this will come back up again. But it's this idea of like, first this thing happens, and then this thing happens, and then this thing happens. But you still have to control for the fact that all those previous ones um, already happened. And here is why I told you to run this as a separate ANOVA, right? So we'll go back to SPSS here and you analyze general linear model and univariate. If you've run this as a separate ANOVA and it's all set up, what you do is you take your little happy DV here and you move it over to your CV. So you pop it out of your DV and move it back to your CV. You take the new second <coughs> DV in order and stick it in the dependent variable box and then hit OK. That's all you have to do is pop it out and pop it back in, move in your new one. Um, and that will give you all the output you need um, that you've already sort of set up. Um, I didn't ask for plots this time, but you could. And now I want to look at this one. Okay, so it starts being an ANCOVA. <clears throat> now, femininity is significant. Well, okay, it's really close. Uh, but I'm going to ignore it, and that's why I made myself this little table. I'm just going to look at masculinity. So I've got f of 1, 364. Oops, 364. Is 6607. P is less than 0.001. Actually, squared is 0.15. And that is controlling for neuroticism. So you see neuroticism right here <clears throat> is listed as a CV now. And so it's getting used in a different way. It's controlling for neuroticism what happens to self-esteem. And so I would, I could analyze like what are the, the means here. <clears throat> but really with Roy Bargerman, the ultimate goal is the last step. So I'm going to run an ANCOVA again. I'm going to take my CVs and move up neuroticism and self-esteem, so any DV here gets popped up to the CV level. And then my new DV is going to be the last one, so attitudes. And my IVs stay the same. Okay. So one more ANCOVA here. Let's analyze, GLM, and univariate. So I'm going to take self-esteem, Pop it out, put it down here in covariate, put attitudes up here on DV, hit OK. All right, all right, all right. And then here, it's my last ANOVA box. <clears throat> and now, controlling for neuroticism and self esteem, we're only doing masculinity because the other things have stopped being significant. <clears throat> Uh, it's going to be 1 and 363 is 1857. P is less than 0.01. P 
and partially to squared is 0.05. Okay. <clears throat> and then the last thing you would do is your post hoc here. Now, I don't have a post hoc here. So run off the page here. Let's move down. Or here, because I've stopped. And now I'm going to look at the marginal means for masculinity. Let's go find those. They're here. And so that is masculinity controlling for neuroticism and self-esteem. And then we're looking at attitudes. So given, ooh, that came out huge. Get a little smaller here. So we can all be on the same page. All right. So given that I'm controlling for neuroticism and self-esteem, low masculinity has higher attitudes than high masculinity towards the role of women. Okay. And so this analysis works really well if you're interested in, you know, given this and this and this, what happens at the end? And so if you kind of created like a step down procedure or kind of a snowball effect, like at the end, what happens to this one variable given that we've had all these other ones? Because you'll notice that I didn't stop and analyze at each step. Now, I suppose you could, um, and some people do, but I feel like the point of this is to get to that last variable and say, here is the ultimate effect of all of these variables in order on this last important thing. So what happens to attitudes if I have neuroticism and self-esteem controlled? Um, so that would be a Roy Bargeman analysis. If you had the significant interaction or multiple levels of post hoc, what I would tell you to do is watch the ANCOVA video where I give you three different examples of how to analyze that. Um, where you'd want to use the compare main effects window, uh, where you could ask for the means, or independent T in a, a couple of different ways for an interaction analysis. Because um, ANCOVA post hocs are a little crazy. Uh, so I would tell you to watch that video if you get to that point and need to be able to analyze ANCOVA post hocs. Okay. Now for this sort of graph, what I would tell you to create is in Excel, more than likely. Uh, and there are two videos, one for Mac and one for Window, on how to create ANCOVA graphs in Excel um, and do the last set of means. So controlling for neuroticism, controlling for self-esteem, um, here are the means for masculinity. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, on attitudes towards the role of women. So I'll tell you to watch both of those videos or one of those videos depending on which system you have uh, to figure out how to make the graph.